Hello Arts 102 and welcome to the value unit. This is not values like family values, this is talking about darkness and lightness. Basically that's what value is, just basically dark and light. To the value of a hue is the lightness or darkness of a hue relative to the colors or tones around it. So basically it just means light and dark. A uh, value pattern is something that you would typically do in a fine arts class. There isn't much reason to do this type of thing digitally because there isn't much to it, but um, in a fine arts class in order to master the materials a lot of times um, you'll try to create this pattern and arrange uh, a composition of these of these different values and you want to try to get um, as even as you can from the darkest and then make a gradient up to the lightest and uh, make some patterns out of it. So basically variations in light and dark arranged in a composition, that's a value pattern. Type of thing you'd see again in fine arts classes. Value can create pattern, volume, texture, and space. Tones that have little difference have low contrast. A large difference between tones is considered high contrast. High contrast values create drama and we all love drama. <clears throat> this is a, an image from the original Clash of the Titans and you can see the histogram down here. It's got kind of a peak in the middle and it slopes off in either direction so it never gets down to completely black or it never gets up to completely white. Um, this has a good amount of contrast. This is what you would consider a good shot. Um, they say typically you're kind of going for this sort of bell curve on your histogram when you're shooting so you don't want to blow out any of the whites or blacks so um, that's kind of formulaic but it usually holds true um, in comparison let's take a look at the histogram from uh, 300 from an image from 300 and you can see what a difference digital makes it's got um, first of all it's got a big spike in the blacks because you can see that there's a lot of um, straight 100% black in this particular image and also it's got uh, a pretty even amount throughout and that comes from being digital so basically what's happening is that you can really sweeten the lights and the darks and keep quite a bit of your saturation which we'll talk about later. Um, chiaroscuro is a painting style sort of. It's the use of strong value contrasts to create depth and visual drama. It's typically painting as far as I know and it's typically um, it seems to typically be a scene from a play so or you know like a dramatic act of some kind so it doesn't have to be that but as far as I know, it's just referring to the use of strong value contrast to create depth and visual drama again. Chiaroscuro is about drama. That's what I'm getting at. Dynamic range is the breadth or range of values in an image, um, sometimes referred to as key range. And you want to try to achieve the widest dynamic range that you can on your imagery, generally speaking. I mean, it's again, it's kind of a generalization, but um, that's the goal, uh, especially with photography. So a high key range would be values between 50%, oops, <laughs> sorry, high key images are primarily values between 50% gray and white. In other words, they're just pretty light images. That's a high key image most of the values are between 50% and white. That doesn't mean that every pixel on the page is above 50% gray, but it does mean that the majority of the image feels pretty high key. And low key, of course, is just a dark image. Values typically between 50% gray and black. That's a low key image. A highlight is a um, reflection of light, basically. An area of any surface that reflects the most light. 
And here's a diagram of some highlight. A highlight which appears on the surface of an object is most exposed to direct light. So you can see some of the highlights in the various surface here. And it, this also shows about where the light source must be coming from in this painting. The secondary, tertiary, and so on highlights are the result of the primary light sources being reflected off one or more surfaces. So those are referred to as bounced light highlights. So the light is coming down from the light source and it's hitting that white cloth and then it's bouncing back onto the objects that this painter is painting. A specular highlight is an ultra high key highlight bounced from shiny, wet, glossy, or slimy surfaces such as hard polished plastic or a slug. Those are specular highlights. They, they happen on shiny surfaces. That's how you make your surfaces look shiny. You give it a little spot of specular highlight and they're pretty much white most of the time but um, you can see in this image uh, just a little tiny bit of color has been mixed in with them um, not much but just a dash a luminous object that generates its own light will also create its own highlights and that's referred to as self highlights uh, that situation is less common you don't typically see that you know if you're talking about light bulbs or the sun or something like that, then you're going to start dealing with less self-highlights, but mostly it's not very common. Shadow, I know we talked about this, but we're going to go into a little more detail. Shadow is an area where direct light cannot reach due to being obstructed by an object. An object's shadow can come from a different object or from itself, so it can be cast from another object that is between it and the light source, or it can because of its own contour, it, it will cast a shadow on itself, too. So here's some cast shadows. Those are the dark areas projected from a lit shape onto other objects or the background. So it's a dark shape being projected onto the cloth that they're sitting on. For each object, you see a little cast shadow. And then, like I said, you got self-shadow. That's a subject casting its own shadow onto itself due to its contour and topography. So those are self-shadows. Reflected light within shadows is just reflecting, just light reflecting off other surfaces to illuminate areas inside the shadow. Notice the orange inside the the circle on the right and there's a little bit of yellow on the left. It's subtle but it's there. It's just uh, bouncing off the fruit and kind of the, the cloth that it's sitting on is grabbing that light and reflecting it just a little bit. It's very subtle um, and this painter's a pretty good painter so they captured the little, the little nuances in there. Tints, basically when you add white to a hue to produce a higher key value, it's called tinting. This is something you would typically do with paint. And then shades, basically adding black to a, to a hue to produce a lower key value. That's called shading. You get a limited amount of both contrast and saturation for any given image. Like I mentioned earlier with that um, 300 compared to the Clash of the Titans image. Adding to one reduces the other. so. In other words, if you want to increase your contrast, you have to reduce your saturation a little bit. If you want to increase your saturation, you have to reduce your contrast a little bit. It's not like a conscious choice. It's just sort of a law of physics. It's, if you are using higher saturation, the contrast comes down a tad. Um, digital technology has definitely increased your contrast to saturation budget. Uh, you still have to trade the contrast for the saturation, but there are more of both available as you saw in the 300 image.